Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I wanna do is show you the basics of representing signals here in MATLAB, how to plot them, and how sampling works, how we store signals. So one of the things, if you remember our theory video, what we talked about is we can't store an infinite precision of T, so we have to create a sort of grid. And what I'm gonna do is emulate what happens sampling-wise, but I have to sample the sampled signal because we can't store an infinite length signal. But often what we do is we just basically have it be have enough t's that it's basically close enough to infinity for our purposes. We have a close enough to an infinite number of t's. So to get started, I'm gonna define f of t as this cosine function, but first I need to define my t grid. So what I'm gonna do is say t min equals minus one, and t max equals one, and I'm also gonna say the num t, I'm gonna generate a thousand points. So the way we can do this is say t, this is going to be a vector of the time indices that I want to evaluate this function at, because we have to plot it, is going to equal lin space. And the way lin space works is it returns a linearly or equally spaced set of points between my minimum and maximum values that I give it. So I'm gonna say between t min and t max. Now by default, it'll generate 50 points, but we're gonna want a lot more than this. So we're just gonna put num t in there. Now what we wanna do is define my function f of t. So first my frequency, what I'm gonna say is my frequency is gonna be two, and f of t is going to equal cosine of two times pi times your frequency, that's gonna be f dot times t, which is my vector. Now I'm using dot times here because I wanna show that I'm multiplying element-wise by this vector. You don't really need to do this because it knows these are all scalars. You can see if I mouse over this, it'll tell me, well, I haven't run it yet, but if I do this now, it'll tell me that t is a thousand length vector and the frequency here is two. So, you know, basically these are all scalars and ft is going to be a vector. So what I can do is plot t and ft, and let's go ahead and give it a label, sorry, a title, plot of cosine of two backslash pi ft. My x label is going to be t, and my y label is going to be amplitude. So I go ahead and run this, and here we go. We've sampled closely enough, or, or sort of, you know, finely enough that, that it looks pretty much continuous for our purposes, which is fantastic. Now, one thing that's really important is you actually index this signal correctly. If I was just going to plot ft, my x-axis here, or my what's called the t-axis, is just going to be the index of this signal because it doesn't know what the values of t these correspond with. So that's why it's better in plot to give it an x value, which would be my where I'm evaluating the function, and then the function itself for the y values of this function at every possible case. So I run it, and that's what we get. So to emulate what happens when we sample a signal, what I'm going to do first is define a pulse train that is going to sample this signal at an evenly spaced number of points. And the best way to do this is first we define a sampling frequency, and I need to make sure that the sampling frequency meets the Nyquist rate. So my frequency of this signal is 2, the maximum frequency. It's a sine wave, so it's basically a, a pure frequency term and positive and negative frequency. So as long as we sample at 4 or above, we're going to be fine. I'm going to just choose 5. And as a result, my sampling period, which is gonna be more useful for us, is just one over the sampling frequency. So sampling frequency is the rate at which, how many basically samples per second, and then my sampling period is basically the number of seconds per sample or the number of time units in between each sample. So this will be more useful. And now I can define my pulse train, which will be the, basically the T's that I'm, that I'm sampling. And this is going to just be, well, we'll go from T min to t max, and I wanna space this out by my sampling period. So what this'll do is it'll go from minus one to one, and the spacing between each point is going to be one over five, I think that's point two. So we can go ahead and plot what this pulse train looks like. So we'll plot pulse train, and then what I'm gonna say is the pulse train is really just a set of ones because we're multiplying it. So we'll just do length of pulse train, like so, and then title, we're just gonna call this plot of pulse train. And my X label is going to be, this is going to be um, time samples of T, and my Y label is also going to be amplitude. 
So one thing, you can plot this with the plot function, but for digital signals, we often like using the stem function, which shows that these aren't a continuous valued function. It has discrete time indices that it's sampled at. So when I plot this, what you'll see is my pulse train where each one is basically spaced out by 0.2 like so. So now what we can do when we multiply these two signals, um, one way we can do this is to multiply it, but the easiest way to do this by sampling f of t is just to, to re-index it at my pulse train. So we're gonna say sampled ft equals cosine of two times pi times frequency. And now I'm gonna multiply it by my pulse train, like so. So I can go ahead and plot, let's do a stem plot here, my pulse train and my sampled f of t. So the title is going to be samples of f of t X label, of course, is T, and my Y label is going to be amplitude. So we run this, and you can see here the samples of F of T. And to verify that this is what, what we're actually doing is the right thing, what I'll do is do a hold on, and what I'll go ahead and do is add, let me just go ahead and say figure, and I'm going to plot the original signal too. So we'll say plot T and S, um, F of T. So we can also add a legend here to show that we have our sampled f of t and then we have our f of t. So let's go ahead and run it. And as we see, we have our function here and we have our samples of the function like so. So now that we have the samples, we want to show that since we've recovered, since we've sampled this at the Nyquist rate, we can actually recover our original signal f of t from just the samples, which is a great result. So the way I'm going to do this is using sync interpolation. Now, don't worry about this, the math right here, what's going on. Um, I'll explain this later. I'll explain the theory about what's going on. But all you need to know is what we're doing is reconstructing the signal by creating a grid of t's that we're going to, to sample the signal and then use sync interpolation, which happens from the Shannon Whitaker form, uh, expression. So that's what's going on here. Once again, I don't want to get too far in the weeds to do this. So we create our recovered x of t. And what I'm going to do is say figure, hold on, hold off, and I'm going to plot my t versus my recovered x of t. And what I'll also do is say title is going to be recovered f of t, x label is t, and y label is amplitude. So we run this, and sure enough, we get exactly what we expect. Now, what we can also do is make sure that we're, you know, <laughs> getting the right samples. So this is going, what I'll do is add a stem plot of the pulse train versus the re, uh, versus my sampled ft, like so. Sorry, this is actually recovered f of t, not x of t. So we'll be consistent here. Pulse train and sampled x of t. And the other thing I can do is plot t and my f of t as well. So that way we're plotting all three. So I'll add a legend and put this in the right order. So we'll say this is the recovered x of, sorry, f of t. Then we have samples of f of t. And lastly, we're going to have f of t. So we run this and sure enough, what we see is we have our function, the samples, and then we recover it. Now it's not gonna match up exactly 100%. And this just has to pretty much do with the windowing that we're using, but you know, this is close enough. Now, one thing I want to show you that happens is if we, we, we made sure that we sampled at the Nyquist rate, but what happens if the frequency of our signal doesn't meet the Nyquist rate? So suppose I bump the frequency up to seven and I run this again. So now we have a much higher frequency signal. We're going to have seven cycles of the cosine per unit of time. And I'm still plotting this point here. So when we go ahead and when you see what happens, you can see that my samples now are still in the same place, but what we'll see when we, when we try to recover the signal is that we didn't sample fast enough. So we run it and sure enough, what ends up happening is we have aliasing. Our original signal f of t here is in orange and from these samples, what ends up happening is it tries to reconstruct the signal, but what you get is a lower frequency term. So once again, we need to make sure we at least meet the Nyquist rate. One of the ways we can do this is just make sure we're at least twice this frequency. So now if I run this again, you'll see I have a lot more samples and this will be sufficient to actually 
sample and recover the signal. So let's run this last part as well. And sure enough, you can see we get it exactly. You can't even see uh, you can't even see the uh, the the original the original signal because uh, because we sampled it so well. So you can see we're matching those samples. So once again, be sure you at least meet that Nyquist rate. And hopefully this video was helpful in showing how we represent and sample signals here in MATLAB. So what I'll do is I'll provide a link to this uh, this live script file. I'll reset these values to what they were. So frequency of two and sampling frequency of five. And hopefully you can use this. Just I'd recommend just play around with it. Just play around with it and you can replace this function with whatever function you want. Just be sure you also replace the sampling function here as well. And you can just basically mirror it. And that way you can get a feel for how sampling works here in MATLAB. So thanks for watching and hope you found this helpful.